Um, we have Jonathan in Israel. Thanks for waiting. Hey. Hey. Hello. How are you doing? You're on with Matt and John. What's up? Uh, I'm all right. Um, I'm an atheist. Well, I'll, I guess I'll start with that. I'm an atheist, uh, I think, pretty much from a very young age, because we're being taught the Old Testament in uh, school. And I started questioning that uh, from the get-go, since I had a family who's secular, so I didn't have any preconceptions until I got to school. Mm -hmm. So uh, because I grew up uh, with that mindset, uh, and I grew up in Israel, which is uh, a Jewish and a democratic state, whatever that means, uh, I've had a lot of troubles uh, with uh, religion and religious people uh, throughout um, my life, basically. And uh, now I'm having some problems with my girlfriend, um, which basically, when I'm trying to be active about my atheism, which doesn't necessarily mean I try to convert people into it, but just when I try to criticize uh, how religious people uh, use um, religion uh, to blackmail, uh, let's say, the secular majority in Israel to get what they want. And like with the settlements, of, if you know, uh, they're mostly inspired or mostly maintained by uh, religious Jews uh, with religious sentiments, a.k.a. Uh, God promised us this land, sure. uh, etc., uh, so, apart from that effect, I, I think that religion has a lot of other negative effects, such as, uh, I don't know, I, you probably know you've read the Old Testament, but the Jews are like the chosen ones, sort of. And being the chosen ones, we have a sect or a part of our nation, like about 20% of the Jews in Israel, consider themselves... Um, the, like the priests of God, like the Cohens, like the uh, whatever you call that in uh, English or in the U.S., and they demand that we pay for their lifestyle, like via taxes, of course. Like the government sure. doesn't force them to study uh, biology, let's say, in schools, and uh, they are allowed to get a discharge from the military, uh, simply to study the Torah, while I don't get any discharge from anything. H hang on and a second. I have to serve for three years. Okay, so yeah. that so that I I'm I'm by no means an expert. I I know quite a bit of things. From yeah, I'm statistics telling you a story. And, I know I'm drifting apart. But no, no, my no. Uh, was well, mainly. it it raised a question because of something you said. So I, statistics yeah. have shown that fifty percent of Jews living in Israel are secular and identify as, as secular, roughly. And you're saying that there's, yes. this, there's, uh, and I had always heard that um, every male is required to serve in the Israeli army for some period of time. Yes. And you're in saying theory. that there's 20% of the population that are essentially... Well, I'm got, saying there's 20% of the Jewish population that not, that gets like an exclusion from uh, serving in the military uh, as a mandatory uh, service, like they don't, it's not necessarily written in the law, but they have political parties that solely uh, represent their interests and blackmail the rest of the government because we have uh, we have a different style of government uh, yeah. as the well, US, there's a bit of a similar to the UK. There's a bit of irony there. We have many that, parties and a coalition. Yeah, there's a bit of irony there that I, I find fairly objectionable, that one of the biggest reasons why there's so much significance in having uh, people serve in the Israeli army is because of the religious conflict involved here. Exactly. And yet exactly. They're, they're the but ones they who are getting the they're exemption. They're protecting Israel by prayer. They, yeah. they believe that they're praying and, that's, and studying the Torah and that's what saves us. And the ones who well, then they shouldn't need anybody else, right? The Torah. 
if, if and they're actually them and protect them with their bodies. If they're actually praying and saving Israel, then they shouldn't need help from anybody else, right? I, I completely agree. I mean, so basically, yeah. my my point was that that that's one of the main problems, right? There are many other problems, but the the point is when I try to advocate against this, or when I try to engage. Uh, not with them, but with my own family and friends about this topic or about how religion uh, is mainly negative or it has a negative in, uh, effect on Israel's uh, future, they usually tell me that I don't want people to um, mess with my beliefs, so why do I mess with other people's beliefs and I should let them be? I, I'd be and happy to let them be, except that that's not what's actually happening. Their, their, their religious position and their, uh, basically they've, they've carved out a privileged position for themselves and this negatively affects everybody else. So if you're saying, hey, you guys shouldn't get special treatment and they're like, I'm not telling you how to live, uh, that's just bullshit. I, yeah, but most, most of the people would agree on that. But when I'm trying to change it, uh, like when I advocate for uh, the separation of church from state, which in our case would be something else than church, I guess synagogue. Uh, and the separation of religion and I government. When I advocate for this, and when I try to advocate that everybody should get the same basic education, like we don't have evolution in schools, by the way, it's just not taught anywhere, not to seculars and not to uh, religious people. And when I try to advocate for these things to be taught to everyone, to the entire population, m my side tells me, why do you want to impose those things upon them? And I'm like, because it's education? Because they need to know, because they, there's objective truths, or not objective truths, but there's things that are more substantial and more uh, grounded in reality that everyone needs to know to make a conscious decision, a real decision between what's true in their eyes and what's not true. I'm, I'm sure and that you could, so one of the things is, do they do this same objection when we want to teach students math and calculus and, I mean, why should we teach those? Um, Exactly. We we the, like I I don't I can't even answer those questions. Like the the point is like my girlfriend. Uh, she's um, she is secular. She defines herself as secular, but she says she believes in reincarnation because it makes her feel good. And I'm like, and she and she spends most of her time looking at cute cat pictures and doesn't think about. The, the macro, you know, she doesn't okay, think about I, the future. She thinks I, about right now. I got to stop you there, and Jonathan. I can't advocate. I got to stop you there. There's nothing wrong with cute cat pictures. Now, you can be secular and not care about the truth. And if she's acknowledging that she believes something because it makes her feel good, um, then that to me seems to be the point uh, of conversation there. You know, basically saying, okay, what, why yeah, would. Yeah, so why? I wanted to ask you. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. There's a delay because you're in Israel and I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a third world country here in Texas. <laughs> um. Well, did you want to say something? Did I interrupt? No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. So my my question, one of my questions to you is exactly, how do I make uh, people who are not religious, uh, especially people who are close to me? realize that this is an important issue that will affect our future and our children's future and if we and if we don't at least um, stand our ground or unite uh, for certain secular values that will be best for everyone it will just get worse and worse like how do I how do I advocate this without being blamed for being a, a fundamentalist from the uh, atheism side because I can't convince my girlfriend to to look around her and see what's happening. I don't like. You seem to be better uh, with words than I am, uh, especially about. This topic. I think so you you I speak at least two languages. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, this and Hebrew. Yeah, I'm not better with words than you are. Uh, that's so. One of the things is you can't make someone believe something. All you have to do, all you can do is do the listen. best job you can. What's that? Or even listen to you. Yeah. I mean, if they don't want to have the conversation, then it, it's over. But 
All you can do is keep trying to present reasoned arguments, and if they reply with things that aren't reasoned arguments, expose that. If, if, if you're saying, I care about what's true, and they say, so do I, but I believe in reincarnation because it makes me feel good, well, that's in conflict. They don't actually care about truth if they're willing to believe something just because it feels, makes them feel good. Um, but yeah. the thing is, you're not going to change somebody's mind most of the time in a single conversation. And also, you may not be the person who's ever going to change that person's mind. It may need that they, maybe that they need to hear it from somebody else or from many somebody else's, and it may take a great deal of time. Um, what you're basically saying is, I've tried, and I'm not having great results, and it's frustrating. Well, that's true for all of us yeah. as well. Um, it, uh, it, I've been doing this show for 12 and a half years or so. If you think I'm not constantly frustrated by even the calls that happened today, you know, Scott, who yeah. call, called in earlier, uh, I'm not convinced that I made any headway or reached Scott at all. But that's okay. Because I had that conversation with Scott and other people heard it and they may have been reached. And also, the next time somebody else has a conversation with Scott about something, um, they may have a better chance at changing his mind, at, at get him, getting him to realize things. Um, I, okay. I, I understand the frustration that, uh, okay, I live can, in... Can in, I ask? In, sure. Uh, there's like, when, what I want to advocate for especially is the dangers of like, I think, I don't know if it's a valid opinion, like, I know it's a valid opinion, but I mean, if, it, if I actually have a point, and I, I want to ask you, what do you think about this argument? When my, when my girlfriend tells me that she believes that because it makes her feel good, and people can believe whatever they want if that makes them feel good, can I uh, put forward the point that if she, if she endorses the fact that if something makes you believe good, uh, well, or if, so, if something makes you feel good, sorry, um, then it's a valid uh, belief. Then, and she does that herself, she actually uh, makes it, uh, she, she actually has no valid um, reason to oppose, uh, let's say, ISIS or any Sure. Uh, other extremist, fundamentalist, religious uh, group because they do what makes them feel good for yep. the same reason. Right. So, yep. okay, so it's a valid because when I when I say it, people tell me it's not it's not uh, comparable, and I think it is. So, oh well, they're not they're not equivalent. Somewhere. These two things aren't no, equivalent. Not equivalent, but I mean it's the same mentality. So if you don't right. condemn this mentality, how can you condemn people who are like you but more extreme? Yeah, if, you're, if your answer is everybody gets to believe as they, as they choose, which I think is already false that you don't choose to believe, but uh, everybody has a right to believe what they, whatever their conscience dictates, uh, and that it is a reasonable foundation for beliefs to just say, oh, this makes me feel good, um, then what grounds do you have for objecting to the people who are like, yep, uh, we think the entire world should be uh, in service of Islam, and if you're not, we're going to kill you. Uh, or we think uh, whites are superior to blacks or Asians are superior to everybody or whatever uh, thing that makes them feel good. Um, the, your beliefs have consequences. They, they inform your actions. But more importantly, while believing in reincarnation might not have dramatic effects on what you do, whatever process allowed you to become convinced that reincarnation is true when we don't have good reason, that same process can convince you of other things. Exactly. That's that's what I'm trying to say, and that's okay. So it it is valid, and people just sometimes shut me off. Okay. So, yeah, that that's going to happen. Well, nobody really wants yeah, to be con confronted with their own hypocrisy on things. Well, the, nobody wants to believe they're like ISIS, and yeah, they're not doing violent things like that. But they're if they're following the same uh, line of reasoning, uh, you know that. Maybe a better example would be something a little less uh, yeah. provocative, you know, because so, nobody wants to be compared with ISIS. But. Lucky, start with Lucky Rabbit's feet and Lucky Socks and, and, <laughs> and superstitions and knocking on wood. Because what people, yeah. when people look at this, they say, this feels right and it feels good and I think it's a positive thing and I'm probably not doing any harm, so I'm just going to go with that. Um, 
Uh, look at uh, things like homeopathy. Homeopathy, I, I don't know how prevalent it is in, in Israel, but it's complete garbage. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not true. It's, it's been tested and shown, and, and yet people are like, oh, well. I, I Listen, I heard a commercial the other day for a homeopathic remedy, and one of the, one of the strengths of their uh, advertisement was this will not interact with any other medication. <laughs> Well, what the hell does that tell yeah, it's you? Because it, it's because they dilute everything with yeah. tons of water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if it doesn't that. interact with anything, what reason do you have to think that it's ever going to be effective? But Yeah, I think it's one of the better scams, maybe, outside of religion. Well, it's really cool if you but can get the, the royal family of some country to basically endorse it, uh, which is what's happened in yeah, England. Uh, sure. Wow. And then throw it away and uh, establish the Anglican church when it's, they feel like it. I think I think my favorite example in April I'll be doing a couple events with James Randi, and he walks out on stage on occasion with a bottle of homeopathic sleeping pills, and eats the whole bottle. Now you could, you, you you definitely shouldn't do that with real sleeping pills, but homeopathic sleeping pills, boy, you can just chug bottle after bottle after bottle of those and go on and give a talk for an hour and never you get groggy at all. You better be careful though, because well, maybe it's a solid advice for losing weight. It fills up your tummy. Yeah, sometimes, anyway. when, sometimes when people say homeopathic, they mean like naturopathic. They don't really mean the heavily diluted stuff. They mean, yeah, you know, check her your label. Herbal, herbal remedy. And so, yeah, you don't want to chug a bunch of those. Uh, anyway, one of the things you can do, Jonathan, and, and after this I'll let you go. We'll, we'll talk to some other people, is try to find other secularists in, right. your, in your area who share your goals. Um, and work with them on projects where you're not necessarily trying to convince your girlfriend or family members, but you're uh, moving out to address these issues uh, in the public, in the government, and, and things like that. Um, because okay, can I throw another sentence, or is it sure? Like okay, I'm, I'm sometimes I argue with theists, obviously, because I meet them all the time. And this thing you call apologetic in the stage just doesn't exist here because I think when people try to explain. Uh, occurrences described in the Bible as miracles, like the crossing of the Red Sea, or the blood plague, or uh, I don't know anything about Jesus, but uh, I mean, that sort of stuff, and they explain it scientifically, or they explain God as being like some natural force. Basically, when they're doing that, they're demystifying or taking the divine yeah. part away from their God and religion, so how don't they realize that they're actually uh, ruining their own point. Well, apologetics... Like, you know, you know what I mean? I just uh, never understood how apologetic reasons are good reasons for so, them. So apologetics has nothing to do with coming up with natural explanations for the existence of God, That's or, or what God has supposedly done. That's not apologetics. But one of the reasons that you don't yeah, see a, a whole lot of evangelizing and apologetics um, is that Judaism doesn't have uh, a great commission. In Christianity, it's basically go ye therefore unto all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, etc. And Judaism, if you want to be a Jew and you weren't born one, you got to jump through some serious hoops and they will do everything they can to talk you out of it. So there's two completely yeah. different mindsets where they're not going out trying to convince everybody to be a Jew, whereas Christians, for are, example, they are. are. They are missionary, they, they are behaving like they're trying to convert the non-believing Jews into, Jude, into religious Judaism. So they are being like that with me. That's what I mean. Okay. Okay. And they come up with points, you know, they said that the crossing of the Red Sea is possible physically and it's been proven yes. that sometimes it's a natural... So how does that prove that God performed a miracle? It just proves that it can happen in, in nature. So right. doesn't that disprove that there was a miracle? Well, it doesn't, dispro it doesn't, it doesn't disprove the miracle. It just yeah, it doesn't disprove, but it proves that it's more likely that it was a natural occur occurrence. No, it, do it doesn't prove that it's more likely, because you can't determine how likely other are. What it does is show that we don't have any justification for appealing to the supernatural as an explanation if we have a natural one. Um, it, it reduces yeah. it to the mundane. It's like if I picked up a die and rolled it and it came up a four and I went, oh, it's a miracle, Jesus or Yahweh has made this die roll a four, and then somebody shows, well, hey, you, you don't need any God intervention to do that. All you've done is just argued, oh, well, I was wrong when I applied yeah, God as the I'm, cause. I'm, so, probably, yeah. being, uh, I'm pro probably coming from a more defensive standpoint as they're trying to convert me. 
Uh, so I'm being more militant, but yeah, you're taking probably the smartest approach or the smarter approach that you can't really tell. Uh, anyway, thanks uh, very much for taking my call and out. Sure, thanks, John. I don't know. I, I don't know about all that much that's going on. I was really wanting to. I would have talked to Jonathan for like four hours. To, <laughs> yeah. Let me tell me more about what's going on in Israel because I'm looking for alternate places to live. Uh, and no, I'm I'm kidding. I'm I'm not moving.